Assembly Member Berry. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I know um, that the other parties will uh, amend and vote for this motion. And I have to say, I find it quite concerning that I'm probably going to be the only voice here speaking clearly against the use of spit hoods on our streets. Um, spitting at someone, is, it is disgusting. I think we all agree that no one, especially emergency service workers, should be subjected to this disgusting and vile assault. And our police face a lot. They need the right personal protective equipment. Um, we should be taking protecting our police officers seriously, but police tactics need to be proportionate. I don't think we'd be here objecting to the police wearing something to protect themselves um, from spitting, as medical professionals do, um, but we're at a time now when trust in the police is being built up, and I cannot see how we can lightly consider a tactic that would see people hooded on our streets by the authorities. The bar for using this has to be very, very high. The evidence has to be so clear, the risk so great, and we're not there. I want to say three things to back up my views. Firstly, a key risk about the health risks of spitting and even biting. Um, evidence from everyone. This are that hepatitis C, which Assemblymember Hall talks about a lot, um, and HIV, which she doesn't, I think for obvious reasons, um, can't be transmitted through saliva alone. They're blood-borne infections, um, and the difficulty of transmission in both cases is, is quite similar. Um, secondly, this tactic would not self-evidently make the police safer. In fact, the Metropolitan Com Police Commissioner, Cressida Dick, cautioned the Police and Crime Committee yesterday about this assumption. She said, most of the time when someone is spat at, however awful it is, it is spontaneous, unexpected, and just happened, and a spit guard will not help with that at all. As she says, spit hoods could only be used if someone has already spat. So while most are spontaneous, sudden, single incidents like this, the spit hood would not help most cases to avoid medical attention. The Commissioner also went on to say, the very action of trying to get something onto um, people being detained or, or whatever would almost certainly make the officer more at risk, not less. Thirdly, the Commissioner also told us that although there has been a small trial of the use of spitters in some custody suites, which she has now extended to all custody suites, she has reservations about its use extended onto London streets, and that it is not the highest priority for the police themselves at the moment. Um, in addition to these points, I want to remind the Chamber that we are having this debate in the context of a very obvious and available measure to help, which is a law. Um, the CPS can and already does charge people with spitting under the offence of common assault. And right now, the Assaults on Emergency Workers Brackets Offences Bill um, has been passed through Parliament and is waiting for royal assent. The bill will help protect our workers, including police, from spitting assaults. If a perpetrator is found guilty, they can serve now up to 12 months in prison or a fine under these laws. Um, by enforcing these, we could deter more people from spitting in a way that would be quite effective. And these are all important reasons to vote against the motion before we've even discussed the question of human rights. I have huge concerns about the disproportionate nature of these hoods. Hooded suspects on our streets is not going to make London feel like a safer place where there is mutual trust between citizens and the police. And I worry deeply about the potential for disproportionate deployment of these hoods on different groups or communities in London. The motion mentions that other police forces around the country use spit hoods, but the stories coming from these places are not reassuring. Some of these forces have used hoods on children under the age of 17, and its use on children seems to be growing. According to research done by the Children's Rights Alliance for England, of the police forces that responded to their freedom of information request, the use of spit hoods on children rose across the two years they studied after 2015. I don't think that's what we want for London. London. Um, Ultimately, the Commissioner is the person with the decision on this, and I was pleased to hear her taking into account the views of people who are both for and against it yesterday. This is not the time for politicians, for political reasons, to put undue pressure on her to do something she thinks poses risks that could outweigh any benefit. I believe the police need to do all they can to build good relations with the public, not introduce divisive equipment hastily that can be seen to be degrading, inhuman and oppressive. So I want to say all of that, and sorry for delaying your lunch, but I will not be voting, voting for this motion, and I hope you can understand why. Right, okay. Um, uh
Andrew Boff has stolen my comments, I will say to you, <laughs> human rights, I'm glad you didn't want to get into that discussion, because for the very same reason, what about the human rights of the police officer? Yeah, that yeah, seems yeah, to be yeah, lost on yeah, so yeah, many yeah, of these yeah, groups that stand up for, for everything that, that most of us don't believe in. We must look after these police officers. It is absolutely essential that we do. And the way they are treated at times is an absolute disgrace. Yeah. And if you say that more and more young people are having the guards put on, well, isn't that a disgrace that more and more young people are having to? Because clearly to them, spitting and biting is acceptable, yeah. which for, I would say, around this table, for none of us, and I hope yeah. I can say for you as well, it is. It is a disgusting habit. And the one thing I will say is... 40,000 people, you heard me on Monday, are suffering from hepatitis C, not even in the um, health plan of the mayor, which we discussed. But those 40,000, many of them are the type of people that, be, unfortunately, with drug addicts, etc., that are infected, that will come into contact more with the police. The police are often sent to hospital for treatment. And the, when they have to have the treatment, the treatment is absolutely dire. Their whole families go through hell to make sure that they haven't got infected by this. It's far more serious than you think. So absolutely, I'm so pleased that we've done this motion. I am so pleased that it will go through. And I'm appalled sometimes that people scream human rights. Let's think of the human rights of the ones that are protecting us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those in favour of the amended motion, please show. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen in favour, Chairman. Those against? Three against, Chairman. Right, can we now go?